Hello, I'm Nathan Jensen. I'm with Palatable Pulpus Productions. I made some videos, then I'm a blogger too. I'm also a uh, hefty zombie fan. I love playing zombie games. I love reading zombie books. I love uh, watching zombie movies. Uh, one thing I'm not too hot on is Max Brooks and his zombie for survival guide, mainly. Uh, that's what I have the most problem with because he makes, the way he talks about it, is if the zombies attack, this is how it will be. The selenium virus or whatever, he, if a zombie apocalypse really does happen, you're going to grab this book and you're like, okay, I know what to do because of Max Brooks. When Max Brooks doesn't, doesn't, some of these things are, are sound, but none, nothing is for certain when it comes to zombies. You need to know a lot more than what this zombie book tells you that's going to happen. And that's what I want to talk about. This is a uh, Nathan's zombie blog. And today I will be just uh, kind of looking through the book and uh, showing you what I don't like. Like for for instance, the first thing is the selenium virus. What's the selenium virus? Who named it the selenium virus? It hasn't happened yet. Are they gonna name it the selenium virus? I mean, I. I, I know, like again, I know this is just a fun book to read, but I see it as this guy seriously saying this is how to fight zombies, and that's why I have a problem with it. But there's different kinds of zombies. There's slow zombies, there's fast zombies, there's evolving, uh, evolving zombies. Uh, there's all these different kinds of zombies, and in this book, I think it's mostly um, slow zombies, which is what they'd be. Zombies, if zombies, oh, it's hot in here. So zombies will probably be slow zombies because just just think if zombies are reanimated from dead they're going to be slow. I mean they don't have it just makes sense. In zombie survival guide it says that their sight is no different from a normal human where uh, so uh sound zombies have actual hearing um and they have a acute sense of smell which I'm not sure if I agree with any of those because I think it's just what they have when they're human, but they're dead. They're, nothing's increased. If anything, it's decreased. And uh, the first uh, chapter thing talks about close combat with a, a zombie. And I uh, definitely agree with the first thing it says, and that is hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat should almost always be avoided because it's it's chance. It's chance. You're always, take, you're always taking a huge gamble when you get close to a zombie, because sometimes you slip up, you're not always perfect, but when you slip up in the zombie apocalypse, you're dead. You're dead. So, I mean, I definitely agree with, with that. Okay, I found one of my first biggest problems is uh, under Slings and Arrows number 6. It says, um, the only practical use for this weapon is delivery of a incendiary arrow. That's catching the arrow on fire, he claims, and catching the zombie on fire and pop, uh, possibly making other zombies on fire, which is a horrible, horrible idea. Because first of all, arrows will do nothing to a zombie. If you shoot them in the arms, the legs, if you plant 20 arrows in them, it's not going to do anything unless you get them directly in the head. Like he said, it was hard to do. But the stupidest part is the fire. If you catch a zombie on fire, what the heck is that going to do? You know how long it takes to completely destroy a human by fire? I'm not 100% sure, but I know it takes longer than a few seconds. It's going to take a good while for it to burn the clothes, for it to burn the skin. It has to completely destroy the zombie, and it's going to take a good while for that zombie to completely roast, and so its muscles aren't usable anymore. And if you catch it on fire, all you have is a flaming zombie coming towards you. I mean, instead of having a zombie wrestling with you or whatever, you now have a zombie that's on fire wrestling with you. You shouldn't even use an arrow to begin with. I mean, if you're just having fun, want to pick up a couple zombies, whatever, not a big threat, then sure, whatever, but do not catch the zombies on fire. That is a horrible idea. The shotgun, uh, right here, on page uh, 47, it says, um, at close range uh, against human attackers, the weapon reigns supreme against the living dead. It's not entirely true. I heavily disagree with that. I think the shotgun is probably the best weapon against a zombie. You don't have to shoot a zombie in the head. I mean, that is the best, quickest, most effective way to surely kill a zombie, of course, is destroying the brain. Uh, 
which can't even be debated itself. I mean, it's not said that it's not set that you have to kill it, shoot the zombie in the head, but it's typical for a zombie. So let's just assume that it is. But still, you don't have to shoot the zombie in the head. If you destroy enough, enough of its muscle t muscle tissue, uh, disconnect enough nerves or whatever, it can't use its body and it's not a threat. If you're three feet away and you shoot the zombie in the chest, it's done. It's down. But you know, according to this guy, I don't know. He he doesn't like the shotgun, but I, I'd take a shotgun. I think this is a little silly too. It says, uh, studies have shown that given the trauma of battle, the closer a human to a zombie, uh, the wilder his shooting is. Studies have shown. I mean, I, I just think that's uh, that's dumb that he makes it seem like it's already happened because I take I take zombie survival seriously, and this guy's not. He's he's making a joke out of it. He's making a joke out of zombie. Do, oh, okay, here you go. Flesh, human, undead, or otherwise takes a, a long time to burn. So it's, it, it's saying what I was saying. Uh, a zombie on fire is just going to attack you on fire. Um, but still, he has some loyalty to fire that I don't understand. I mean, he liked the flaming arrows. I don't know why he's against fire in this one. And and then he talks about blow torches and Molotov cocktails and dousing them in, in, in flame. I, I Flamethrowers, he has his whole... Uh, thing on flamethrowers, acid, poison, biological warfare. Radiation's definitely not going to do anything. <clears throat> Nanotherapy? He talks about having short hair so zombies can't uh, grab your head. I mean, I don't know how many people are going to be altering their fashion during a zombie apocalypse, but I'd agree with that. Uh, short hair is a better way to go because, I mean, it just gives them one less thing to pull you with. Okay, this is one thing that I uh, um, think with all zomb any zombie, not just a zombie, I'll set this down for a second. Not just the zombie survival guide, but anything like uh, Left 4 Dead, for example. In Left 4 Dead, if, I don't know if anyone's played it, but if you're, uh, if a gate, for example, there's a chain link fence, and you're on one side and the zombies see you, they're going to run at you, hop the chain link fence, and then chase after you. Um, it's thinking absolutely nothing besides I need to eat you. That's all it's thinking. If there's a building and you're on another building and a zombie's on top, the, on top, and it sees you all the way across and sees that you're a human, and he would, what all he knows is you're there, so he's gonna walk towards you and fall off the building and, and die. Because I mean, he doesn't know that the building goes off. He doesn't think, oh well, I don't think I want to fall off the building. I should probably go down the stairs, go across the street, then go up the stairs, then eat him. The zombies don't. Zombies aren't that smart. They're just going to fall off the building. I mean, some Dead Rising are very good. Uh, they're probably the, one of the best uh, zombie zombies I've seen in any game or movie. They're slow. They trip very easily. Yeah, it's just one thing. I mean, in, according to Max Brooks, it seems like they're a little more... Because, for instance, you have to destroy the staircase. Zombies aren't going to get upstairs. I mean... They have to lift of one foot higher than the other one and place it on the next stair and lift themselves up in order to get up the stairs. If you're just upstairs, first of all, if you're in your house, for crying out loud, I think you're safe. I don't think a zombie knows to break in your house. I don't think it knows where to break in. It'd just be hitting the walls or something, even if it knew you were in there. I don't see how it would know you're in there. So if you could be just sitting watching TV and you'd probably be perfectly fine. He doesn't like shopping malls. He um, says it's an indefensible structure, which I, I don't necessarily agree with. I don't think it's the smartest, just because of how large it is. I mean, you might not even find all the zombies in the mall, let alone... did. But again, there's zombies. If you close the door and lock it, you're probably good. You don't even need to lock it. I mean, they can't open a door. I mean, you might as well, but they can't even... Zombie is about sight, smell. Uh, hearing, uh, and if you're in a mall, they're probably not hearing you, and they're probably not smelling you, and they might see you. I, I mean, if, I think it's not a bad idea for a mall. I, I don't know why he has cemeteries on his... Why would anyone want to shack up in a cemetery? You might as well shack up in an empty field. I mean, what's... A uh, horse is not a good thing. The main thing I'd think about a horse is... If there are people in the way and they're making noise and stuff, the horse is going to get spooked easily enough. If they're freaking zombies and there's a lot of them, the horse is not a reliable mode of transportation. They can grab your leg, bite your leg as you're going by. It's not, oh, okay, oh, here's, okay, listen to this one, the bicycle. Uh, uh, the vehicle offers the best of both worlds. The common bicycle is fast, quiet, muscle-powered, and easy to maintain. 
Add this uh, to the additional advantage that is the only vehicle you can pick up and carry if the terrain gets too rough. People using bicycles to escape from infested areas have almost always fared better than those on foot. Now, first of all, who's he talking about? Have there, has there been an instance where there's been a zombie invasion and someone's done this? Because that's the way he's, he's saying it, and it's worked. But, um... So he says a bicycle is the best. I mean, that is completely retarded. I mean, if... Okay. There's a street. There's a couple scattered zombies. You're like, okay, I, I'm, I have my bike. I can weave in and out. And maybe you do. Maybe you pass a couple. It's no, it's, just, it's a game of chance again. What if one stumbles the wrong way? What if one falls over and you hit him wrong? What if one just grabs you the right way as you're going by? I mean, you're not that fast on a bicycle. You can't... You know, it takes a lot of energy. You can't be booking it on a bicycle all the time. And if you're in a somewhat uh, zombie... It, if you're on the highway, it's stupid because you might as well use a vehicle that's going to get you there much farther and not use your much-needed energy. And if you're not on the highway and you're in a suburban area, wouldn't you rather hit a zombie with a car than possibly have it take you down? Because if a zombie gets in the way in the car, it's not going to do anything. I guess depending on the vehicle, but I mean, as long as you have a somewhat uh, sturdy vehicle, a couple bodies to the front isn't going to do much, and you can, you can try to evade them too. I mean, it's not like, I mean, if you have one of those smart cars, I'm not sure how long that's going to work out, but, uh, but a bicycle is a horrible, horrible idea. Everyone falls off their bicycle now and again. How do you think you're going to do when a bunch of zombies are coming after you? Now, if, if they're running zombies, there's, there's no chance in hell a bicycle's going to do anything. If they're slow zombies, maybe. They, they might, they might. But still, it is a horrible idea. It takes your energy too quickly, it isn't that fast, and it's so easy to slip or fall or get get hit or... I mean, if, they, if, there's, if there's a good crowd of zombies, what are you going to do? Just run through them? If you hit a person with your bicycle, you're going down. Bicycles don't plow through people. They fall over when you hit something. Even if it's a person. I mean, that that's that's probably the stupidest thing that I see Max Brooks say is a bicycle that is absolutely retarded. I don't quite get this one. It says, uh... You can place an animal in a cage, position your team with uh, in weapons range of the cage, and then kill the zombie that comes to eat the animal. I don't know what zombies they are, these are, but what zombies have you ever heard of that are eating animals? I mean, uh, I don't even know if you can consider Resident Evil a zombie movie. They have such a weird mutations and stuff in that movie, but I don't even know. They don't eat animals. It's just that the animals can get infected, right? I mean... But what zombies eat animals? Zombies don't eat animals, they eat humans. I mean, first of all, I just don't know if I agree with his uh, animal attack thing. I mean, I wouldn't put a cat in a cage and have zombies lure it. Why would you be luring zombies anyway? You go on the defense when a zombie apocalypse happens. The Now, if, if there were like 20 zombies in your area, go kill the zombies, then shack up. If there are, you don't know, in the city. How many zombies are in the city? There's no way you're going to kill all of them. You're just wasting ammo. Why would you lure a zombie out? I don't know. Okay, here's another joke by Max Brooks. Underwater battles. Never forget the possibility of ghouls stumbling into nearby water before you declare uh, area secure. Too often human. Too often humans have uh, repopulated cleared zones only to be attacked days, weeks, even months later by zombies who have just recently found their way back up the dry land. Because the undead can exist, operate, even kill in liquid environments, hunting them may require occasional underwater warfare. This can be extremely hazardous as, okay, uh, then he has a know your zone, scan the surface, consider drainage, find an expert, prepare your gear, and he has like harpoon guns and stuff. Uh, this is, wow, look at, the, look at all this. He has like detailed instruction on how to fight a zombie in water. This is just completely retarded. Um, look, oh my gosh, it, it keeps going. They have, I, they have freaking, like, netting zombies out of the river and what, here, too. How many freaking pages does this guy have on freaking, wow, lakes and ponds, swamps, oceans? This is absolutely ridiculous. If there is a zombie in the water, there is zero threat it is going to, okay, maybe 5% threat that it's going to attack you. First of all, I'm not seeing too many zombies are going to find their way into the water. Like I said earlier, though, if they see you and there's a riverbed between you, they're going to walk into the water, they'll get swept away, you're good. Um, uh, I guess 
I guess I agree in a slight way that uh, water's probably not going to kill them. Once the zombie's in the water, it's done. I mean, like I said, it especially if you're in the water and a zombie's in the water, again, you shouldn't take the chance, but it is minuscule that there's there's no there's no contest between you and a zombie in water. There's no contest. If it gets a hold of you, that might be a different story, but it shouldn't be it shouldn't even get a hold of you. That doesn't it's just like a human. Sight, uh, smell and sound. In water, sound is completely distorted. You're not it doesn't know what's going on, it's moving around, it's hearing other sounds, it has no idea where you are, where it is, what's going on. Same for smell, it can't smell anything, it has no idea where it is, what's going on, and it can't see anything. It can't see, uh, I mean, okay, it, it, it can kind of see, I guess, but it's distorted enough that it, it can't figure out what's going on. To the zombie, it just loaded up on like LSD or something, and it, it, it has no idea what's going on, it's tripping out. It, the zombie is not going to function at all in water. It's, it's, it's done. It's done. There's no way you are going to engage a zombie in um, in water combat. That's just a uh, uh, silly. It looks like, okay. Now this is kind of this is definitely a joke right here. This is a huge joke. Um, I don't. And then, uh, and this is the thing that bugs me the most, the Solanum virus. Now, zombies are made up. Uh, zombies are made up just in their their world, though, in their, the zombie dimension where zombies exist, there's a way of how they are, and Solanum virus isn't in the zombie world. That's not part of what zombies are. Even the physical, in the uh, fictional world of zombies, Solanum isn't a part of it. Okay, well... Thank you for uh, watching, I guess. Um, that was just my uh, view on uh, zombie, or I guess general, some tips on zombie stuff. And uh, uh, Max Brooks's, um, Brooks's, Max Brooks' uh, zombie survival guide, and which is some problems I, I have with it. I don't know. It's just feel free to uh, comment below, uh, discuss among yourselves, I don't know talk about zombie stuff, tell me if I'm wrong or right about something, uh, maybe some ideas of your, you liking or disliking Max Brooks or other zombie stuff, I don't care, uh, go nuts with zombie, whatever, um, I'd say rate, but I guess it's like now, um, if you wanna like my stuff, I guess, I guess that'd be pretty nice if you wanted to, uh, Uh, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here. I'm not sure what I'm waiting for. Uh, so thank you for um, watching in HD.